you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and I've got a piping hot content pie for you all to feast on right now. But but wait, just 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 before you do, maybe you'd like some DLC for your base experience. How about some cherries, eh? No? How about some piping hot fudge? Or I'll tell you what, if you get the season pie pass, then you'll get both the cherries and the fudge, and I'll throw in an upper crust pack which gives you a pie elongation heat bonus and a sweet lattice effect for the pastry. As you can tell from that really awful pitch, DLC comes in many forms, but for the most part, they don't actually change the game too much, many just being cosmetic or slight changes for the fans. However, sometimes DLC can affect way more than your bank balance because it might end up actually breaking the game itself. So let's pony up the dough and have a look at some of these half-baked mares. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are seven times DLC broke the game it was made for. Number seven, Final Fantasy XV. Now, I absolutely loved this game. I mean, true, it was a big departure from what we were used to from Final Fantasy games, but then again, after the questionable 13 era of games, you know, 13, 13, 2, Lightning Returns, whatever bollocks that was, that this was a breath of fresh air that was much needed. What arguably wasn't needed was a free piece of DLC that makes your party invincible. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about the Magitek Exosuit, a costume that you can give to your party that makes them utterly invincible for 30 minutes a day, except from damage taken through the Omega spell. I mean, small caveat really. Now clearly this is just meant to be a little bit of fun, but here's the thing, while the game tells you it's 30 minutes of in-world time, players reported having the suit continued to buff, stating that it was based on damage taken, not any form of a time limit. Therefore, you had a party that was near invincible, with a buff that resets every 20 to 24 hours, it wasn't very clear, and sometimes doesn't even run out at all. I mean, talk about taking a walk on the mild side. A brilliant way to utterly cheese a game whose combat was meant to be its biggest challenge. Well, that and the horrible pre-patch corridor segment, ooh, no thank you. Number 6. Red Dead Redemption now, what do we have here, partner? Looks like you've done wandered into the wrong neck of the woods, Slick, and I'm gonna make you squeal it. That was awful, wasn't it? I'm gonna make you squeal is what the line was gonna be, with insufferable loading times! Ah, That was a great joke, I put a lot of effort into that. Yes, such is the case of the one and only Red Dead Redemption, a story about a hat-haired man trying to go on a quest to settle down with his boring family on his boring farm. I kid, the game was utterly brilliant, and it even included a rich multiplayer suite that ticked all the right boxes. From horse racing to gambling, you could team up with friends and take on others in an online brawl to see who was the best. Well, you could up until the Outlaws to the End DLC that was. This DLC was a free offering from Rockstar that was supposed to add in new co-op missions, some more free roam bits and bobs, as well as some multiplayer balancing. However, However, what the update did do was take the balance and just throw it out the bloody window, as for a few days after the DLC dropped, players complained about endless loading times and the inability to connect with their friends. Now, Usually we wouldn't include such an event on a list such as this, because introducing bugs via patches is actually quite common. The job of a developer is actually incredibly difficult, and we just, we just make fun of them all the time. But you know what? The sheer irony of a DLC designed around bringing people together, actually breaking the game and keeping people apart, tickled me somewhat. Also, the worst part about all of this was that there was a free DLC, meaning that nearly the entire player base picked this up as a result, and was therefore punished. They say don't look a gift horse in the mouth, but this one might as well have been destined for the glue factory. Number 5. Borderlands 2 the planet of Pandora is a treacherous, violent, and savage land filled with psychopaths that will kill you as easily as one of them changes their socks. Basically, think of it as Newcastle, except exchange loot of different colours with kebab meat. So as you might expect, you'd be looking for anything and everything to help you get a leg up on the competition. After all, you don't want to be staring down a rabid piece of wildlife with nothing but a white flag made from your own stained underwear, would you? Of course not. It doesn't work, trust me. Therefore, when you look at Borderlands 2 and its monstrous selection of DLC, there's bound to be some guns and gadgets that affect the balance of the game, right? Well, true, but it's not as big a breaking element as that which was introduced in the Digistruct Peak Challenge. As this increases the level cap and adds in 
overpower levels, allowing you to take your character all the way up to level 80. Now, while the DLC feeds you enemies that are also of this level and therefore provide some challenge, as soon as you step off the peak and back into the base game, well, you realize the enemies there don't rise to the challenge, and as such, you turn on a ridiculously easy mode without ever having the choice to do so. This, in turn, makes the base game such a cakewalk that there's little reason to revisit anything, and that just is a real shame. Number 4. Dragon Age Origins Whereas Bioware's sister series Mass Effect went with a more sort of traditional renegade slash paragon system, Dragon Age goes with a more complex approval system, where your morality doesn't really factor in, and instead it measures how much your companions approve or disapprove of your actions. Now, opinion is split on whether this approach is actually better than Mass Effect, but the party line is that it is meant to make you think about your actions more because each and every sentence can affect your relationships. It's meant to make you labor over every choice. Well, that is, unless you have the Feast Day Gifts DLC, which completely removes any consequences entirely. With this DLC, you could purchase gifts for your companions that give out 50 points of approval each. Now, while this might sound like nothing, 50 points is enough to turn someone from wanting to tear out your throat to, well, passionately kissing it, meaning that you could almost go out of your way to piss people off before chucking them a cheeky chocolate orange or something of equal nature to get them back in line. You could either purchase purchase the DLC with real-world money like a chump, or in-game money, which is probably much more sensible, and was such a low amount that it was almost criminally broken. It took the goodwill of Dragon Age's conversation system and boiled it down to, if you give people things, they'll be nicer, which, while being horrifyingly true in real life, did kind of undo any of the narrative thrust the game was looking for. Number 3. Persona 5 now, as a semi-recent convert to the Persona series, even I can see that Persona 5 is the easiest of the franchise, in that it's clearly been designed to be the most accessible entry in the series, what with the combat options, the more general learning curve, and with the huge amount of stuff that New Game Plus gives you, it means that you're never really going to be stuck for long in this game, which makes it all the stranger that Atlas, the developers, would go and give you DLC, which makes the game an absolute his take. Now, thanks to the extra content players can choose from Izanagi to Orpheus to even Ariadne and Asterius from Arc System Works Persona 4 Ultimax Arena, and apologies if I butchered the names there, I am a newbie, I'm, 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 I'm trying there, but basically there are tons of cool personas from previous games that are ridiculously overpowered. And I do mean ridiculously, because you can summon any of these big bad boys the moment that you get the Persona Compendium, and you can do it for free the first time you use them to get a feel for what they do. What this means is that it's like a get out of jail free card for all involved, turning what might be some areas of challenge into little more than a quick tea break. Number 2. Fallout 4 like Dragon Age, Fallout 4 focused more on companion alliances rather than internal morality. No matter what you say or do, one companion will either approve or disapprove of what's going down. Some of them you might even care about, but not Preston, though. Never Preston. However, if you simply don't care about what your team thinks, and trust me, I'm right there with you as my team as the collective brain power of a piece of corn, then you can simply bin them off in exchange for a pedal bin with miniguns in form of the Automatron DLC. This expansion pack adds tons to the game, from new areas, enemies to fight, and new weapons, but one of its most intriguing features is that it allows you to manufacture your very own robot companion. You can make as many of these robots as you like, and they do everything your companions can do with just a few mere augmentations, and you can even make them not talk in anything more than bleeps and bloops, so it stands to reason that they don't have much to say when you're chowing down on a corpse or blowing up a community. Therefore, all that nuance and emotional weight that Bethesda wanted you to take into consideration, well, post that straight to the furnace, my friend, as Mr. Stabby and I are going on a fun field trip without any of the judgement. And number 1. Ultima 7 and now, much like when your mum has managed to coax the milk from my snake, it is time for my final entry, and it's going to be one that many of you were not expecting. It's Ultima 7, and also my one per list. Ultima 7 might rightly be lauded as the granddaddy of PC RPGs, and its expansion pack Forge of Virtue is utter class. 
Now, Ultima 7 sees your character having to deal with a cult that's slowly taking over the Kingdom of Britannia in order to summon their dark god, simply known as the Guardian. So where does the Forge of Virtue come into play here? Well, long, long story short, you find a previously unknown island that culminates in you getting your hands on something known as the Black Sword. And from here on out, the game gets ridiculously easy. You see, the Black Sword is possessed by a demon, a very powerful demon that hungers for the souls of all living things. What this means for you is that you can pretty much one-shot everything in this game that isn't a boss fight, including some of the game's important NPCs like the ruler of Britannia, Lord British. Now, in fairness, this dude does have it coming, especially if you know anything about the ultimate entries before this one, but doing this basically makes the game unwinnable. You have, by doing this, broken your game about as effectively as you possibly can. Brilliant. And there we go, those were seven times that DLC broke the game that they were developed for. Isn't that interesting, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. But before you go, just want to have a quick chat with you and just see how you're doing. Because, you know, it's still effectively the early parts of the year at the time of recording this. And I hope that you are well. hope that you are treating yourself fairly and as best as you possibly can mentally and physically. There is no challenge that you cannot overcome with a little bit of positive mental thought and, if you need it, a bit of help. There is no shame in asking for help. Remember that. And also remember, you can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And remember for a third thing, God, there's three, three things to remember, overloading you at the moment, sorry about that, that my name is Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.